Welcome back. We're going to continue working with our Festo Didactic Mech Lab Stacking Magazine. In our previous video, we kind of went through, we'll call it the unplanned way of managing to get the process work. And you probably got a little frustrated. Now, hopefully you took the time to go through that machine sequencing video and decided which method you wanted to use. And yeah, go ahead and put it down in the comments which method you thought was best in that. So in this video, we're going to talk through how a little bit of planning up front will make our programming life a whole lot easier. And for my programming, I'm gonna use the sequence move times 10 method. Now this is not the most sophisticated method. This will not make anyone impressed with you as a programmer but it leaves you a lot of opportunity for additions when you forget a step or when you're making upgrades later on. It's also really easy for someone to come behind you, look at your programming code and troubleshoot it. And hey, if we don't get calls because people have problems for machines, that means we'll get calls because they want us to make more machines. In that video, I did break this into subroutines. I probably won't for this one just so that we can easily navigate it in the video. But we're going to have certain sequence steps. So in this case, my first step is actually 10. And that allows me to put 1 through 9 above it later on. And since I have 10 and then 20, I can add in between here. But so we'll have a step. And then when it equals that and whatever input conditions are made, we'll go to the next step and go to the next step and go to the next step. And then we'll need to reset it. So first, let's talk through what our steps are and let's go ahead and write them out. Our first step is really to know that the container is in place. Now, we don't have a sensor for that. We are going to use the operator pressing the green button to know that happened. I'm just going to create a new sheet and I'm going to call this my stack magazine steps. And we're going to have step number, we're going to have input, and we're going to have output. And honestly, to start with, I would just put one because we can rename this for the skip later. And so our input is what do are we going to be looking for until we go to step two? And in this case, it will be the green button. Now, we don't actually have an output for step one because the operator manually places the container and then presses the button. On a real machine, we probably would want to use a light or something to signal them that, hey, I'm ready for another one or something. So right now, I'm just going to leave this blank. So now on step two, that's going to be extending this cylinder out. We're going to use a time for now to know that we have extended it out. So step two's input will be lid pusher extend time. And our output will be lid pusher extend. Now, after it is extended and put the lid in place, next we need to retract the lid pusher. And our input for this one will be lid pusher retracted time. And our output will be lid pusher retract. That's step three. And then once it is retracted, now we need to push our lid presser down for a certain amount of time. So step four will be lid seal time. And we are going to extend our lid sealer. There's actually one more step that a lot of us struggle a little bit is we do have a step five that needs to get us ready for the next process. So step five will simply be in the process. And for my output, I'm just gonna say, get ready for next process. Now, since we're skipping through here so that we have room to add, just in case we forgot something, now I'm gonna make this step 10, step 20, step 30, step 40, and step 50. Let's pick up where we left off in our previous program. This is kind of what we ended up with, with our, we'll call it unplanned way of figuring out our logic. And I don't want us to have to do a lot of extra work again. So let's highlight these rungs and just delete them. Mainly because I don't want us to lose our descriptions and our variables. Now, if you are coming here without actually seeing that previous video, here are our input assignments. 
And here are our output assignments. And we have already wired the Festo Didactic Stacking Magazine to our PLC trainer. And there's a link in the description that has all of these videos in it. And while we're here, let's do a little bit more housekeeping before we get started, mainly in our local variables. Let's just clean this out. Let's, this way we're kind of starting fresh, but yeah, we don't have to go back and type all those descriptions again. Uh, so we're gonna open up our program and let's start roughing this out. So we're gonna need a sequence. And we're going to use an equals, and coincidentally, there's our green button, and then we'll move 20 to the next sequence. So this rung right here is exactly what we need. It'll be a good practice rung for us. So let's bring down a new rung, and we'll bring down an instruction block. And all right, now we haven't really talked about this in this series, but we have two themes up here. And so if you're Familiar with RS Logics 500 or Studio 5000, for equals, you're thinking EQU. And when you type it there, it's not going to be there because we're in the IEC 61131-3 standard. And in its case, it is simply the equal sign. Now, if you like the latter ones better, all we're going to do is go to this theme right here. We're going to hit the Logics theme. And now we can go right back. Double click on our instruction block, and now we can type EQU. And since my sequencing video was done on these type of instructions, this is what I'm gonna stick with for this video. For I1, we need a sequence tag, and we have not created it yet, so we're gonna double click on the bottom part. That actually brings up a new tag dialog, and we're gonna type sequence, and we want the data type of this to be a double integer. And we'll hit OK. And then for source B, we are gonna type 10. And then we have our green button. So we're gonna bring a go look for a one down and we're gonna put our green button in. And then we're gonna bring another instruction block down and this will be an MOV, a move instruction. And we are gonna move a value of 20 into the sequence. Now notice, since we already created sequence over here, now it's in the drop down. So I just gotta hit the drop down and grab it. And that gets us roughly to the same rung that we have here. Now, we can't use the yellow button, we can't continue on like this, but that gets us started now we can talk through it based on what we came up with in our spreadsheet. So we've taken care of this one, that's the step 10, green button, no output. Okay, so now we need the lid pusher extend, and this time we do have an output of that lid pusher extend. We're gonna do something very similar to what I did in rung two here. We're gonna have if we are equal to 20, and then we're gonna put this timer in right here. That way it's just true for a certain amount of time, and then it'll move on to the next step. Let's bring down another instruction block, and this one will be an equal, and this will be sequence 20, and we'll bring down another instruction block, and we're gonna put a branch around it and bring down an instruction block into the bottom part of that. And this will be our T-O-N. And then we are gonna need a preset time on this. I'm gonna call this the pusher extend time. And time is the correct data type. And we had the issue in our previous video where when I would go to make a change, this went back to zero. We already know this needs to be about one second. We can put that as our project value. So T number sign one S, that's gonna be one second on that. And then we're gonna bring a go look for our one down into this upper branch. And we'll be looking for this pusher extend dot Q. So just start typing pusher extend. On the end of it, hit dot, and you'll see the Q come up. And then this will be a move instruction. MOV, and we are gonna move a value of 30 into our sequence. And that gets us pretty much to what we had in rung two over here. Now this one was done in Studio 5000, so we're looking at the done bit, but if you are working in the Micro 800 Connected Components Workbench, that is the Q bit. It takes care of the input part of this, but we also have the output part here. So we need to add it also. So when we are on step 20, we want the lid pusher to extend. 
I'm going to put this at the bottom of this program. In the sequence and exercise, I actually created a separate routine. And if I was developing a machine program, I would. But just so I can easily navigate back and forth explaining this, I'm going to put these outputs at the bottom here. So if we are equal to 20, we want an output energized to our double acting cylinder advance. And honestly, let's go ahead and rename these a little bit. Uh, th this is a very good descriptive name that did help us understand what was going on, but the name's a little long. So let's go to our controller variables. This is our pusher extend. This is our pusher retract. And this is our lid press. Now, a lot of you are gonna ask now, why did I just put that output energize in a branch right here on sequence 20. In a basic program, that will work perfectly fine. But the issue is, if we want this lid pusher or anything else to turn on during more than one step, we would need a branch. And that's why I'm separating this out. And hopefully that was clear from our previous video. All right, that gets us to step number 30 in our process. And step number 30 is pusher retract and we're gonna have a pusher retract time. That is really close to what we have in rung two. So we're gonna copy and paste. So copy rung two, we're gonna paste it right back. And we wanna be really careful not to get our numbers confused here because now we want it when this is equal to 30 and we're gonna to wanna to move 40 when we're done. And I just noticed I made a big mistake because <laughs> this one needed to be up here because this was our pusher extend. Notice we have pusher extend for a TON, and this is pusher extend one. We're getting ready to rename it. So I'm sorry. This one should have been 20 and 30, just like it was. This one should have been 30 and 40. And then we're gonna double click on this TON, and at the bottom, we're gonna rename it to pusher retract and then this will not be the extend time anymore we're going to double click on the bottom of it and we're going to click the new pusher retract time and that data type will be time and very similarly we found out in the previous video this needed to be about one second so for my project value i'm going to put t number one s that'll get us through that step and that's almost the same as what we have here so we're going to right click four copy and we're going to right click and paste and on this second one this will be when we're a value of 30 and we're going to want to do our pusher retract this time it takes care of that so the next is the seal so we have a lid sealer and we have a lid seal time and that's when we're in step 40. So up here, notice, again, we're doing a lot of copy and paste at this point, but yeah, in this case, this is based on time again. We're gonna right click and we're gonna copy. This time I'm gonna be really careful. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna paste and pay attention. Yep, I pasted in the wrong place again. Uh, so I'm gonna drag this one down because mainly we have pusher extend T-O-N, pusher retract T-O-N, and the next will be that one. But first, let's get our numbers. This is gonna be when our step is 40. And when we're done with that, we're going to want to put a value of 50 in. Next, we're going to rename our TON. This now is going to be our lid press. And we will change this to a new tag called lid press time. Its data type will be time. And for this, we used five seconds. So I'm going to put T number 5S. And then we need to put in our output, which again, we can simply copy and paste on this one. So copy and right click, paste. And so in this case, we'll be on step 40. And this one is output four. All right, now that gets us through our process. But as I said, a lot of you forget this one right here. We need an end of process that gets us ready for the next one. In the case of this one, we had a blue button that really reset our sequence, but we want this one to automatically reset. Also, I just realized I made a mistake up here. You know, I changed these timers. I did not change their cues. So up here we have pusher extend, pusher extend cue. We have pusher retract. We need a pusher retract cue here. So pusher retract dot cue. And this one needed to be lid press dot q 
Okay, but now we need one more rung, and I am going to insert a rung for this one, and we need to bring an instruction block down. And we could simply put an equals 50 here, but we want to put a little more thought into this. Let's go back and just review why we did what we did here. There is the equals 50 in our case, but also notice we have the less than 10 because we do have 0 through 9 that we're leaving available. So we do need that less than 10. and this one right here is not a bad one to have, greater than whatever it is. That way, just if for some crazy reason we end up out of range, we've got it. And then also we have the first pass. Now, I'm going to leave the first pass out just so we can talk about what is going to happen, and then we'll go ahead and fix that. But yeah, so in this case, we are going to hit this, and this will be an equals. And we are going to look at our sequence that it's equal to 50. And then we don't have the blue button. We're going to leave that just as it is. Also, I don't know what I accidentally did, but I'm going to take that out. But so we're going to bring a branch down, though, because we also have the less than condition. So this will be an LES. And if our sequence is less than 10, and let's add one more branch here. And this one will put an instruction block in that if it's greater than 50. And in all of these cases, we're going to bring an instruction block, and we're going to put an MOV in, and we're going to move a value of 10, which is our step one of the sequence, back to sequence. Okay, honestly, I have not tested this. I really wanted to go into this blind, just like you are right now, so we can see just how well our planning worked and using one of these sequence methods will work. So now let's go ahead and download our program. And if you need any help downloading your program or you're not sure about how to configure drivers or even how to create a new program, hit that subscribe button. We have lessons on all that. All right, so now let's test it out. I'm gonna go ahead and remove all the parts just in case. And let's just have a look at our program first, just so we can start following what all is gonna be going on. So right now our sequence value is 10, and it is waiting on the green button before it moves on. And if we go down to our outputs, then we have an error. And here is a problem with copy and paste that I did not catch. I'm sure all of y'all have by now that I had LEQ on this first one instead of EQ. And then, yeah, I copied and pasted that all the way down. So we're going to have to fix that. So I'm just going to double click on it. And you can simply type EQU up here, grab it, and we'll go to the next one. And we'll do the same. And we'll go to the third one. And we'll do the same. Proof positive, you will continue to make mistakes throughout the rest of your career. And that's why here we call them learning opportunities. And now our three outputs look much better. Notice we got a little triangle here, a little warning. I'm not really sure why this happens when you change these data types. It's perfectly fine. In fact, let's just try it. I think if you close this and you open it right back up. Yeah, yeah, they're gone. Uh, that's just some little oddity when you when you change those instruction types. It didn't affect anything. But okay, we're waiting on our green button, and we should be able to sequence through here. So first, let's just hit the button and see what happens. Press, it extended, it retracted, it came down. And five seconds later, it retracts back. So I'm going to put my container in. We're going to drop a lid in. I press my green button. Whoa. And that is the difference between trying to make something work and keeping adding to it and going and laying that out as a plan, picking a method of sequencing and executing it. I bet you feel even a lot better working through this exercise. I have to say, I am really enjoying working with these Festo Didactic. Mac Lab trainers. And I love the transition we are making because in the conveyor one, we learned about wiring. We learned about some sensors and we started to learn a little bit about how to do some basic sequencing. And then we got to this one and we saw where that little bit and adding on kind of made it a stumble and that we needed to start having a plan. And our next one is Talking about handling solution, which is the third of this Mech Lab Trader series. And click here where we're going to learn about it.